Mr. Mesereau? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Miss Arviso, before we continue with the tape, I'd like to clarify something. Did you tell the jury earlier that even the outtakes were scripted? Yes, everything, the whole entire, from the moment we got to Hamid's house, Brad Miller there, was there, Michael's P.I. So when you said about Gavin, he was doing gang signs. That was what he was doing. He's, he shot out to his friends on the west side, was that all scripted? Everything, everything was scripted. Okay, we can continue. You need to push the DVD button. I pushed DVD. I'm going to pause for a second. Shall we just pick up? We missed 10 seconds, but I'll just go ahead. Now, Miss Arviso, this is the portion of the videotape where you refer to the Department of Child Social Services, right? Yes. And you told the jury that you were criticized for referring to them in the videotape, right? As I told you before, I got in trouble by, because I mentioned, I went off the script with God, cancer, and the child welfare services, those three things. Okay. Specifically, Vinny told me. So now you're off the script. Yes. When you criticize the Department of Child Social Services, right? Yes. You were speaking of your own free will when you said that, correct? Yes. And when you said, so where are all these people that, that have all of a sudden this care and concern throwing the child advocacy group on me, the Department of Child Social Services, you were telling the truth, correct? At that point where I went off, God, the child welfare services, and the cancer, so that one word. Were you criticizing the Department of Child Social Services? No, that one word I went off the script, and so I got in trouble for it. Were you criticizing the Department of Child Social Services? No, that was part of the script, the child advocacy. That was part of the script? Yes, I added that the child welfare services in a way that was off the script. And why were you criticizing that agency? Well, I had the child welfare services meeting that morning, and it blurted out, so I got in trouble for it. Were you worried about the meeting? No, yeah, I was worried about the meeting, so I got in trouble for that. So you were being critical of DCFS, correct? No, no, I wasn't. That came out. It came out, but you were. No, the word, the one word, child. We can move on. Whereupon, a portion of a DVD, Plaintiff's Exhibit 340, Disc 2, was played for the court and jury. Ms. Arviso, everything said in this interview was memorized, correct? Everything was except for what I got in trouble for. Those are the three things. I was supposed to say that Michael healed Gavin. Your Honor, could I, could the court admonish the witness to just answer the question? Yes, just answer the question. I thought I was answering it. Yes, go ahead. Everything was memorized word for word, right? Yes, except when I blurted out the little meeting that I was going to have in a matter of hours. I wasn't supposed to blurt that out. And I did. I failed. Now, you told the jury yesterday that during this period of time where you claim your family was falsely imprisoned, that you never reported it to the police, correct? Correct. And you told them that you didn't report it to the police because you thought no police officer in Los Angeles would believe you, correct? That's correct. And because you thought no police officer would ever believe you, you never talked about being held against your will, right? Is that a question? Objection. Vague. To whom? Let me rephrase it. What is the period of time that you claim you and your family were held against your will by people associated with Mr. Jackson? From, approximately from February to March. And? That's my best estimate. And what date was this rebuttal video, if you know? This was, the best I can remember as being taken there on the 19th about 11 p.m. at night, approximately. And then it went into the morning of the 20th, was filmed at about 3 a.m. and that morning, about 9 o'clock, was the meeting. During the time you claim your family was held against their will, were you in contact with any police officers? No. Do you know a Los Angeles police officer named Andrew Lassick? Officer Lassick, yes, I do. 
Who is Officer Lassick? Officer Lassick is a friend. How long has he been your friend? He's been my friend since I think approximately. Let me see. Oh, you know, after David was arrested from domestic violence. That period of, I think, about 2001. And during the period of time you claim you were being held against your will, you were communicating with Andrew Lassick, correct? No, that's incorrect. Well, do you remember an interview you had with the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department where you mentioned Andrew Lassick? Yes. Remember while you were discussing what Vinny was doing, you told the interviewer, he's one of the LAPD officers that I had told him about things that were happening? Do you remember that? I don't think you're saying it correctly. You're leaving things out from the beginning and in front of that. Would it refresh your recollection to see what you told the Santa Barbara sheriffs when you were interviewed? No, you don't need to, I'm saying to you, you're not saying it completely to the jurors. What he's trying to say is I was, after I met with Mr. Dickerman and Mr. In the process of that, of the attorneys, I tried to reach Officer Lassick. And in between that was when I had contacted him in order to get help to let him know what was going on. And then in the midst of that, that's when the sheriffs, the Santa Barbara sheriffs got involved, and the Santa Barbara sheriffs, which is on my police report, stated that he didn't need to get involved, that it happened over here, so therefore they're the ones that are going to take over the investigation. During the time you claim you were falsely imprisoned, you had phone conversations with Andrew Lassick, correct? Incorrect. Okay. But during the police interview, yes. He is with the Hollenbeck Division, correct? That is correct. The Hollenbeck Division of the Los Angeles Police Department is the division where your Soto Street address is, right? That is correct. Okay. And you're saying you never told anyone from the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department that you were in communication with Andrew Lassick during that period of time? When we were having a police interview, Officer Lassick happened to call because I was trying to put in a call, like I said, between the attorneys and the Santa Barbara sheriffs. This period was Officer Lassick, way after Neverland, because finally I was able to make contact with him. Do you remember telling Officer Lassick, something big is happening. I can't talk about it. I have lawyers. I never said something like that. So if he said you said that, that wouldn't be true? Objection. Argumentative. Speculative. Sustained. Did you know an LAPD officer named Patrick Metoyer? Yes, I did. When did you meet Patrick Metoyer? Officer, the same time Officer Lassick, I met him. And what year would that be? That would be in 2001. Did you know a Sergeant Milt Hernandez from the LAPD? And Officer Metoyer is no longer working for LAPD. Did you know a Sergeant Milt Hernandez from the LAPD? That, that name doesn't sound familiar. Do you remember talking to him? He's with the Hollenbeck Division. I think what you're trying to refer to is someone who was there as a watch commander or something like that. But not a friend. He's not a friend. When did you first meet him? Who's him? Objection. Vague. Milt Hernandez. When did you first meet him? If it's the same. Objection. Assuming facts not in evidence that she ever met him. I'll rephrase it, Your Honor. Did you ever meet Sergeant Milt Hernandez from the Hollenbeck Division? No, never. Did you ever speak to him on the phone? If it's the same person, I think it was inquiring about the LAPD explorers, because I was interested in moving Develin from the Wall Street Central Division up to the Hollenbeck Division, if that's and approximately when did you talk to him, if you remember? I don't remember. You said you first met LAPD officer Andrew Lassick. And this is the best I can remember. You said you first met LAPD officer Andrew Lassick in 2001, is that correct? That is correct. And how did you meet him? I think it was because of a call or something like that. And what are you talking about? That's the best I can remember. You said it's a call about something? Yeah, that's the best I can remember. Did you call him? No, I didn't. Did he call you? No. Did you ever ask him to assist you or your family in anything? 
No. Did you ever ask him to drive you home? Not me personally. Did he ever drive you home? I think so, yes. In the LAPD car, yes. I do recall that. And when did LAPD officer Andrew Lassick drive you home? He drove me home because I had, both my feet were operated. And how did you get in touch with him? I think there was a call, a request for help, and he helped me out. I don't really recall. He drove you home from the welfare department, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yes. Okay, and through him, you met a number of LAPD officers, did you not? Yes, just met, not friends. And they were in the Hollenbeck division where your Soto Street home was, correct? That's correct. And I don't know any of their names. And you met all these officers in approximately 2001, right? This is correct. You also met some officers from the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, also called MTA, right? This is correct. And who did you meet from the MTA? Excuse me, let me rephrase that. What police officers did you know from the MTA? That department, to the best I can remember, was dissolved. It's no longer. They were all sent out to different departments, because that was, that had ended. But I did get to meet, which I completely lost contact with them. I think it was a female officer and a male officer. No, actually, yeah. That was the initial officers I met, yes. But they're no longer existent. How do you know that? Because I drove, I rode the bus frequently and I never got to see them again anymore. They were substituted by private security. Because LAPD used to run the Metro Department. Did you ever meet a Sergeant Chu from the Rampart Division? Sergeant Chu. That name doesn't sound familiar. How about a Cindy Garcia? I may have. But it doesn't sound familiar. How about a Detective Angulo? A-N-G-U-L-O. From the Hollenbeck Division. It doesn't sound familiar. Because of Officer Lassick, I got to meet a lot of officers, but they weren't my friends. Just when he was doing his patrol, he would stop by and he would have someone with him. He was. What are those officers called when they're, oh, he was a training officer. So he constantly had someone he was training. And at one point you had LAPD officer Lassick's cell phone number, didn't you? Yes, I did. Do you remember the number? No, I don't. And he did some nice things for you and your family, didn't he? Yes, he, he was our friend. Please tell the jury the nice things that LAPD officer Andrew Lassick did for you and your family. I'm going to object as irrelevant. Sustained. Ms. Arvizo, the truth is, you knew a lot of police officers near where you lived, you could have called any of them and said you were the victim of crime, and you didn't, right? It would have been helpful, but Officer Lassick was recently married in about June. And out of respect I figured he's got a new wife, and it's best that I don't communicate with him. So I lost communication the day he got married, right before. Did you ever hear of a group called Big Brother or Adopt a Family? No, but, no, but I came to find out now that maybe those kind of things are. I'm sorry? That's what I told you. Okay when you were interviewed by Santa Barbara sheriffs? Yes. Did you ever mention that you had met Andrew Lassick and a bunch of other officers through a group called Big Brother or Adopt a Family? I think that was Officer Robel or Officer Zealous that mentioned that. It wasn't I that said that. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. Did you ever participate with LAPD officer Andrew Lassick in any type of group involving family support in East Los Angeles? Okay. Officer, I think I know what you're referring to if. Yeah, whatever. Please tell the jury whatever it is. Okay, Officer Lassick, usually all the department. This is what was explained to me. Each officer personally picks someone, someone from the community or someone they like, or anything, and they put their name into some kind of. I don't know how it works, but this is how I came to understand. That they put their name into some, something. And then they pick families out of there. And that's it. And was your family chosen to participate? Yes. Officer Lassick put me and my kids in there. Approximately when was this? This was in, 
I don't remember. But it was Christmas. Do you know approximately what year? No, I wouldn't be able to tell you that, but I know it was Christmas. Was it before you think you met Michael Jackson? No, it was after. Because I, like I said, I met Officer Lassick after David was arrested. And for the jury's benefit, approximately when was David arrested? About. I don't know. My best estimate, September, October of 2001. That's my best estimate. And in your interview with the Santa Barbara sheriffs, you said that Mr. Lassick would come with different officers and make jokes, right? Yes. He would, like I said, Officer Lassick, even though he was a corporal, he's also a training officer. And he would bring different officers, and he would stand in the doorway, and he'd make jokes with the kids. Now, which doorway was this? My front door to my apartment. Okay, and you said he'd get a big kick out of the kids telling him jokes, right? Yes. And do you know who the officers are that he used to bring to your front door? I wouldn't be able to tell you, because the majority of them never came twice. They just would come once. How many would he often bring? Excuse me, let me rephrase that. How many officers would Mr. Lassick bring to your house at one time? Well, whoever he was training at that time. What's the largest number of officers he ever brought to your house? Well, him and the other person he was training. And did you ever go to the police department to see him, where he worked? I don't think so. Did you use to see Officer Lassick driving around the Hollenbeck Division? Yes, I did. And you were a friend of his for a number of years, weren't you? Up until he got married. Because when he got married, I felt it's a new marriage, and out of respect, he needs to dedicate himself to his wife. And I don't think it would be very respectful for me to be a friend when he's supposed to be dedicating his time to his new wife. Okay, do you remember the names of other officers in the Hollenbeck division that you knew around the time Officer Lassick used to come to your doorway? Only Officer Lassick. Did Officer Lassick ever arrange any type of fundraiser for your family? No, outside from him putting, putting us in that Christmas thing, that's it. No fundraiser. Now, what Christmas thing was this? It was. Every officer picks somebody and they put it in like a bag, and that's it. Okay, and where did this take place? In the Hollenbeck Division. And what location did this Christmas event take place? In the Hollenbeck Division. Okay, was that at the police station? I think it was. Did you bring your children to the police station? I didn't go. Did your family participate in that event? Yes. How? Officer Lassick had came by and told the kids that on this day they were going to have like a Christmas party. And that's it. And who went to the Christmas party from your family? Develin, Gavin and Star. Okay, and this is after 2001, right? It definitely has to be, because it was. I met Officer Lassick after David was arrested, and that's my best estimate. When is the last time you spoke to attorney Larry Feldman? Don't say what you said. That's confidential. But when was the last time you spoke to attorney Larry Feldman? I, I wouldn't be able to tell. I couldn't remember. Have you been in any communication with him in the last month? Let me see. Let me see. No. It's only the times that I was receiving subpoenas from your office was. Yeah, that's the best I can remember. Have you talked to him in the last couple weeks? I don't think so. I've been here. Have you talked to attorney Larry Feldman in the last couple of weeks? Let me see. You know what? When was, when did he testify? I can't answer questions. Oh, okay. I'm only saying that would help me remember. Because it was before that time. Have you talked to attorney Larry Feldman while this trying has been going on? Oh, yes, yes. How many times? Oh, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Just about every time you send a subpoena. Okay, would it be accurate to say that while this trial has been going on you've talked to him more than once? Oh, yes. Every time they send a subpoena. Okay. Counsel, there may be a little ambiguity there as to while the trial has been going on. Oh, okay, I understand. 
what the trial is to some people is different than others. Sure. Let me rephrase it. You're aware that attorney Larry Feldman testified in this trial, right? Yep. Yes. How did you know that? Because I had seen, accuser's mother's attorney testifies. I seen that, something like that. Okay. Within the last few months, you've been in contact with attorney Larry Feldman, have you not? Yes, yes. You've been in contact with him on a number of occasions? Yes, every time they send a subpoena over. Okay, okay. Now, I think you've answered this question, but let me just be specific. Okay. All of these officers you met through LAPD, Officer Andrew Lassick, starting with the year 2001, none of them were ever contacted by you about false imprisonment, right? That's correct. None of those. Until when I tried afterwards between Mr. Dickerman and the Santa Barbara sheriffs. And on your thing they said, don't talk to any other officers but their department so the investigation wouldn't be compromised. Before you went to attorney William Dickerman, you never contacted any of these officers or trainees that you knew in your neighborhood about anything you claim Michael Jackson was doing? That's correct. I was afraid to talk on the phone, because they were monitoring, listening and surveilling me and following me. That's correct. Even when you were at your parents' home, you never called LAPD officer Andrew Lassick and complained, right? Because at this point I didn't have his phone number. When did you lose it? When he got married, out of respect, I seized my communication with him. Well, you'd been to the Hollenbeck Division Police Department before, right? Yes, I had. Did you ever contact anyone from the Hollenbeck Division Police Department and complain about Michael Jackson? Well, I no longer belong to their division. I know, because my apartment, because of them, is no more existent there, so I'm not their problem anymore. You still could have called them, couldn't you? I didn't, because of being monitored, followed, surveilled, listened to. You didn't call them from Jay Jackson's apartment, right? That's correct. You didn't call them from your parents' home in El Monte, correct? That's correct. You didn't call them from Soto Street while you were living there, correct? That's correct. But I told the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Department. After you went to attorney Larry Feldman, right? No. Before. Jay Jackson called in about February and that's when we communicated. That was our first communication. You didn't fill out a police report with any police department about anything until you went to attorney Larry Feldman, right? We made contact with sheriffs, Santa Barbara sheriffs, back in February. They were not helpful to us. So there was this big gap until afterwards. When did you first meet attorney Larry Feldman? After Mr. Bill Dickerman introduced me to him. Do you know about when that was? I wouldn't be able to tell you. But they could tell you best. To your knowledge, how long has attorney Larry Feldman been giving you advice? Don't say what the advice is. I'm just asking you, as far as you know, how long has attorney Larry Feldman been giving you advice? I'm a little confused by the question, because he's helped more than gave me advice, when you guys have been bomb, giving me all those subpoenas. I understand. That they even wanted my school records all the way till I was a kindergartner myself. Move to strike, your honor. Just a moment. That's stricken. Do you want to rephrase the question? Yes. If you know, for how many years has attorney Larry Feldman been giving you advice? Your honor, I'm having difficulty with it. I'm telling you, help and advice to me is different. She's asking you to clarify the question. That's what you say to an attorney is confidential, and I'm not asking you about your conversations. Okay? I'm just asking you how long, in your mind, attorney Larry Feldman has been helping you. We'll use the word, help. Okay. Well, he felt that your defense team was bullies. Objection. Objection. Sustained. Move to strike. Stricken. Your Honor, could the witness be admonished to answer the question? Ask the question again or have the question read back, please. What you say to an attorney is confidential, and I'm not asking you about your conversations. Okay? I'm just asking you how long, in your mind, 
attorney Larry Feldman has been helping you. We'll use the word, help. Okay, every time they, they were sending me the subpoena, for example, requesting all my school records, all the way till I was a kindergartner, he's been helping me. Let me ask it one more time. But if I'm not clear, just tell me. Okay. What year did you meet attorney Larry Feldman? In 2003. You knew some police officers from the MTA, did you not? Yes, I did. I did meet them, but it was not a close contact, as I was with Officer Lassick, which I stopped because he had gotten married, and that was it. And they no longer were in existence, because a private security company took over the Metro Bus Division. So I lost complete contact of them. An MTA means Metropolitan Transportation Authority, correct? Yes. They're underneath the ground. They're police officers that were underneath the ground taking care of the trains that run. I don't know whether they're train or metro rail. I don't know the correct. And you knew a number of officers with the MTA, correct? When that was dissolved, my, as far as my relationship was with them, every time me and my children rode the trains, when we would see them we'd say hello. But past that, once they were, I don't know what the word is. When they were gone, no more, I didn't see them anymore. And how many officers from the MTA do you think you knew, when you knew them? It was about two, a male and a female, and the rest were by sight. Every time we'd see them, we'd say hello, but there was definitely more than two that I recognized by face. And were they stationed in the Hollenbeck area? No, they weren't stationed in the Hollenbeck area. Where were they stationed? They were stationed, to my understanding, they were stationed right there, underneath the ground in the train rail system. And didn't these MTA officers help your family out also? Well, I don't know if you call it help, but they also did some Christmas thing. And what was that? They... They took a liking to the kids, because they saw the kids go off and on the trains, and so, and that was it. And approximately when did this happen? Christmas time. Approximately what year, if you know? I don't remember, but I do remember Christmas time. Was it after 2001? Oh, oh, yes, yes. After, after David was arrested, me and my kids became free to have, to go beyond having friendships. And after David was arrested, it would be accurate to say that you and your kids had a lot of friends who were police officers, right? The only one we could say is Officer Lassick. That's it. The rest were just people that we met, but completely lost contact with. And through Major J. Jackson, did you meet anyone in the United States Army? Not really. I, no, I don't even go to, when Jay would have, like, gatherings from the Army, I prefer not to go. Even to his, even to his going away luncheon, because I knew I wasn't smart enough to be in that kind of group. Counsel, is this a good place to stop? Yes, your honor. Thank you. All right, we're going to recess for the weekend. Remember next Wednesday afternoon, we're not going to be in session. I'll see you Monday at 8.30. Remember the admonitions. Don't talk to anybody. Don't read anything. Enjoy the weekend. When are we not in session? Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon we're not in session. We're here Monday.